This Learn the Electrics video is to help those that are taking inspection and test exams or assessments and want a little more practice before the day. Of course, it will also help those taking other electrical exams as all learning is good learning. Or you may just want to add a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. There are eight fully worked questions here. Each question will have an answer provided and you will benefit most if you pause the video where prompted and attempt an answer first. The answers will be multi-choice as in many online exams. As well as the answer, we will tell you why that answer is correct, why it was chosen. And we show you where to find the answer in the books. And all books used will be to the 18th edition Amendment 2 versions either a brown book or with a brown stripe across the front. And we also explain the logic behind that particular answer, why that is the correct answer for safety, function and so on. Let's begin with question one. Each question will have four answer choices offered. Choose the most appropriate answer for that particular question. That is important. For that particular question there will only be one appropriate answer. In a domestic dwelling, the hallway has a new lighting point added, so that the existing light and the new light operate together from the same switch. The new lighting point ceiling rose is connected to the original ceiling rose using 1.5 by 1mm twin and earth cable and has a length of 7 metres. An R1 plus R2 measurement of 1.3 ohms is obtained at the original ceiling rows before connecting the cable to the new ceiling rows. What is the expected R1 plus R2 reading at the new ceiling rows after the cables are connected? And four possible choices. You will not be provided with a drawing in the exam, but you may make your own sketches if it helps your understanding. Pause the video and attempt an answer. You will need to use either Guidance Note 3, Table B1, or the on-site guide, Table I1. Find 1.5 by 1mm cable, as shown here. It tells us that this size cable has a resistance value of 30.2 milliohms per metre length. Now we can use that resistance value in a simple calculation to find the resistance of the new 7 meter cable and then the total resistance of the whole circuit. The new R1 plus R2 will be equal to the original R1 plus R2 plus the resistance of the new length of cable. If 1.5 by 1 twin and earth has a resistance of 30.2 milliohms per meter length then 30.2 ohms multiplied by 7 is 211.4 milliohms. We can convert this to ohms by dividing by 1000 to give 0 0.2114 ohms and then round down to 0 0.21 ohms. We're not finished yet. That is just the new cable. Now we must add that to the resistance of the original. So the new R1 plus R2 is 1.3 ohms plus 0 0.21 ohms making 1.51 ohms in total and we should choose answer B. Question 2 next. This question looks simple enough but be careful as one of the books appears to show a different order. Let's look. From the four choices shown A, B, C and D select the correct order for the tests numbered 1 to 4. Simple enough, four tests have been selected, put them in the correct order for testing. Don't worry that there are tests in between that have been missed out. Just concentrate on these four and choose an answer A, B, C or D. Pause the video while you make your answer choice. This is the correct order for the four tests and we should choose answer D. That gives us 3, 1, 4, 2. If you make use of the on-site guide and look on page 109, 
you will find a testing checklist in section 9.3. The red box shows the regulations as they also appear in the wiring regulations book and this is the approved order of testing. For reference, the blue boxes on the right show the numbering used in the question and the order is quite clearly 3142. Now, if you consult Guidance Note 3, Chapter 3.10, you will see a description of the different tests. Although Guidance Note 3 lists the tests to be completed, they are not in the same order as in the Wiring Regulations book. This list is just describing the tests. Use the order as shown in the Brown Wiring Regulations book or the on-site guide. The regulation number order and the yellow boxes show the regulation numbers referred to in this question. Moving on to question number three. This is one of those questions where you need to read the answer choices carefully. You are testing a domestic TNS system and you need to carry out a prospective fault current test or IPF test at the consumer unit. What must you do before making the test? And you have four sentences of information to read only one is correct. Pause the video and attempt an answer. Answer D is the correct choice. We should leave the main switch off, carry out safe isolation checks and the main earth should be left in the main earth terminal or MET. Why? Because we want to know the maximum current that might flow during a fault. With the earth conductor left in the main earth terminal, we will include any parallel paths to earth through any bonding or earthing paths. This drawing gives a pictorial image of the answer to the question. Main switch off, safe isolation checks done and the main earth left in the main earth terminal. To carry out the IPF test, set the meter to the correct range and test between the incoming line terminal and the earth bar. Shown here is a three lead test, which includes a probe on the neutral. Some more modern meters will only require a two lead test, the line and earth connections. Get to know your meter before assessment days. And now to question number four about TT systems. A TT system is protected by a 300 milliamp RCD. If we test the earth fault loop impedance to the earth electrode with a test meter, what would be the maximum permitted reading that is acceptable? There are four answer choices and by way of a little tip, the answer can be found in a table or by using a very quick and easy calculation. Pause the video and find an answer. If we wish to use the table, go to page 70 of the Brown Wiring Regs book and find table 41.5. It's an easy task now to look at the table, find 300 milliamps and read off the answer 167 ohms. We should choose answer D. Or we can use the formula found in the Wiring Regs book in regulation 411.5.3 part 2. An easy transposition of this formula will make the resistance the subject. Look at the formula in the orange box. It is just Ohm's law. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. 50 volts is what we call touch voltage, the upper limit of the ELV voltage range. And 0 0.3 amps is the same as 300 milliamps. 50 volts divided by 0 0.3 amps is 167 ohms. Again, answer D. Question 5 is next. Remember to pause the video after each question and attempt an answer. Before we look at the question, you must understand the differences between these tests. They use the same switch settings on your test meter, but they test different things. The results will usually be in kiloamps and one kiloamp is equal to 1000 amps. A test result of 0 0.63 kiloamps is the same as 
630 amps. IPF and PFC are two ways of saying the same thing. The wiring regulations use IPF as an abbreviation and in full will write it as prospective fault current. It is tested between line, neutral and earth at the consumer unit at the incoming tail side of the main switch. It tells us how much current will flow to earth during a fault. PSCC, prospective short circuit current, is tested between line and neutral only at the consumer unit at the incoming tail side of the main switch. It tells us how much current will flow if there is an electrical short between the line and neutral conductors. And notice there is no mention of earth in a short circuit test. Here's the question. During a periodic inspection of a domestic installation with a TNS earthing system, an IPF or PFC test and a PSCC test are carried out. The results are as shown here. What should be recorded for IPF on the schedule of test results? Pause the video and have a go at the answer yourself. The answer is B, 0 0.710 kiloamps, shown as 0 0.71 kiloamps on some test meters. We record the highest of the readings, in this case 0 0.71 kiloamps, the worst case scenario. This is a single phase installation, so we record the value as is. We do not double the values as we would for PSCC with a three phase system. Question 6 is next. Be sure to read each answer carefully. The question asks In order to prove the effectiveness of the main earth conductor and to acquire an accurate ZE value for the installation, what must we do? Again, pause the video, read each possible answer and make a choice. The answer choice is A. The installation should be isolated and the main earth conductor disconnected from the MET or main earth terminal. If this is a TT system, the connection to the earth rod or earth electrode should remain in place. Only remove the connection to the MET. By removing the earth conductor from the MET, this has effectively isolated the earth conductor from the rest of the installation and therefore isolated it from parallel paths to earth through extraneous parts, bonding cables, etc. that may give unreliable and false low readings. We want to prove that the earth conductor is actually connected to something and we want the highest resistance readings, the worst case scenario. If the worst case passes with the conductor disconnected, then all will be okay when it is reconnected into the MET. This drawing shows a ZE test with a three wire tester. Some testers only require two leads, the line and the earth. The main earth conductor is removed to eliminate parallel paths affecting the readings. The installation is turned off, but this is still a live test, so take suitable precautions for your safety. On to question number seven. This question is about ZS. A radial final circuit is protected by a 16 amp type B BSEN 60898 circuit breaker and we have the following test results as shown. What should be recorded on the schedule of test results for the maximum measured ZS? Pause the video, choose an answer. ZS is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2. So we have 0 0.32 plus 0 0.72, which is equal to 1.04 ohms. So choose answer D. And finally, question number eight. After low ohms continuity tests on a ring final circuit, the following values as shown were obtained. What value should be recorded on the schedule of test results for R1 plus R2. You have four values to choose from, 
pause the video and attempt an answer. Answer C should be your choice. Some books will show the formula as L to L and E to E divided by 4. Others will show it as little r1 plus little r2 divided by 4. So we have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.83 and then divided by 4. This will give us the answer of 0 0.33 ohms. We hope you've enjoyed the video and we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.